In today's video, we're going to show you how to build this awesome IKEA craft table using the Calyx units and also just a topper. You can use wood, you can use a IKEA desktop, whatever you want to use for the top is fine. Uh, it just needs to be a little larger than the Calyx units and we're going to start right now. Hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to go ahead and just give you an explanation of exactly what we're doing. Uh, we're, we're going to make an, the ultimate craft table from these two IKEA um, Calyx units. You can get these at IKEA for about, you know, around 70, 80 bucks a piece. Basically, what we're going to be doing, we're going to be putting them together like this. We're going to screw them together almost exactly, almost close as we can together. Just, just kind of sandwich them together and screw them together. And we're going to take this whole assembly. We're going to put casters on it. Which I don't, know how, I don't know how to draw casters in Tinkercad. And we flip it at 90 degrees. And when we put casters, they're going to be about five inches off the ground. And then we're going to be taking these guys, uh, one by sixes, and we're going to build a top for it. Let me show you exactly what that what that's going to look like. And we're going to be taking these 72 inch boards, and we're going to be cutting them to I think about 61 inches is what we're after. And that'll give us almost almost an even fit. And what we're going for is this. We're just going to take them and we're going to duplicate those across. And Tinkercad should be smart enough to know what we're doing next. And see, so you can see that it makes a nice little craft table top. And then to make it a little more aesthetically pleasing, we're going to darken these up with some stain. So it'll look more like this. All right, guys, this is one of the units we're going to be using. Uh, I got it locally for $140, and it included this guy over here. Um, so I got both for $140, which is a heck of a deal, considering that's how much they cost without those drawers. Those drawers, they're really nice. They're the IKEA drawers. And I think they're something like $20 or $25 a pair. So it's $100 worth of drawers on a $79 unit with another $79 unit. I got all of them for $140. So overall killer deal, very excited to put this together. I'm gonna get everything unloaded and we're gonna get them together and get them screwed together and all that good stuff. All right guys, now we're gonna go get to our Harbor Freight and we're gonna go ahead and get our casters and everything. Um, it's right before closing time, it's pretty sky behind me. But we're gonna do that real quick and uh, I'll, I'll catch you on the inside. You know what we're looking for we're looking for like four inch casters and the reason we want that is uh those four inch pvc casters right there they add a significant height to the uh to the workbench they're right at like five inches tall and right now they're on sale super cool that's exactly what we need for our workbench so we're gonna do that we're gonna put them on there we're gonna be good to go Next up, I'm using my compound miter saw to cut the 1x6 boards for the top to 61 inches. I use a square and tape to mark them. The main goal is to make them as even as possible on the final edge to avoid it being funky. I also went ahead and cut the 1x4s that will be joining the IKEA unit. These are cut to around 31 inches for the top and around 24 for the bottom. I recommend going a little bit more than 24 because it gives it a little more uh, stability when you space out your casters a little bit more than what I did. Once we get everything cut, it's time to assemble. about messed up big time we're just getting them flush and we're going to screw them together this one also the, the frame is bad on one side so we're going to put that side in but overall we're just going to get them on there we're going to, we're going to put some screws in them and they're going to be fine that's about as close as they're going to get together which is totally fine. That's going to work for what we need. Next up, we're attaching the 1x4 boards and casters to the bottom of the IKEA Calyx units. Initially, I used inch and a quarter screws, and it's a huge mistake. They just don't get enough bite. Once going to 2 inch screws, I felt much better about it. Also, try to make your 1x4 boards almost as long as the IKEA units. I did mine quite a bit shorter and regretted it because I feel like it could use additional stability 
uh, when you space out the casters a little bit more. I think around 27 inches would have been perfect. Once you have them cut, you just attach the boards and casters with the screws and you're good to go. Be extra careful when flipping it over though. In addition, depending on your screws, you may need washers to securely mount your casters, as the ones I used uh, went right on through the caster holes. But once you get your 1x4 boards mounted, you should be good to flip it over and go ahead and finish up the construction of the top. Alright, I'm going to hold both edges together and I'm going to flip it for I'm going to flip it the other way this time. And I think we're plenty strong enough this time. And it really will be better when I get the top secured. Tough to get under it, but we made it. And we're there. And it's rolling, it just needs to be bolted together good up top and we'll be good to go. Our goal is to do basically just like this. To do three sections just like that. And then put all of these across. So this is what we're actually going for. And basically this is what we're after. Granted we're going to finish and stain and figure out which side's the best and all that. But it should be Fairly straightforward to do. And once we join all the pieces, it'll be nice and easy. Now's the fun part. We go through the pieces we cut, find out what order we want them in, which sides we want facing out, and we use screws to attach the 1x4 boards to them. I ended up using three different joining boards for stability, although I believe a fourth one would have been nice. I used inch and a quarter screws, and they worked out perfectly as long as you don't go over tightening them. I did go ahead and pre-drill all the holes to avoid splitting the pine boards. Alright guys, this is the progress so far. We got our wooden top done. It's not sanded, it's not stained, but it's it's... It's getting there. Um, we, we don't have it mounted because because there's no reason to mount it until we get it ready. But check it out. She rolls like a boss, just wherever you want to put her. And that's uh, that's what I what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do like a dark oak stain on this. I'm gonna I'm gonna even out all these edges, um, get those nice and smooth. This edge ain't bad. I mean, I could probably just take a belt sander. We're gonna smooth out some of these high spots in the surface. And it, it's going to be looking right. And we're going to get all these drawers and start putting them back in. I don't know whether I'm going to keep them on the top or bottom yet. But but either way, it's, it's perf the perfect size for my cutting board. Which is 24 by 36. And it's right at, it's right at about a 32 inch wide by uh, I think 61 inch tabletop. So it fits perfectly over these IKEA Calyx units. Um, and again, this is five, actually it's one, two, three, four, five, six, um, one by sixes. And this is a, it's a, it's going to be a really nice work surface once I put the, once I put some effort in the stain, uh, sanding and staining and all that good stuff. But super happy with it. It's super solid. And once it gets some screws in it, it's going to be real solid. Now, most people think pine is pretty ugly, but with the right prep and stain, it turns out decently. Granted, it's nowhere near as nice as oak, but it is much cheaper. I used my orbital sander to prep the surface and clean it with a microfiber. After that, I brushed on a coat of Varathane pre-stain conditioner on the top. This really helped the stain absorb into the pine much more evenly and keeps it from looking mu muddy or blotchy. After letting the pre-stain set for about 30 minutes, I wiped off the excess and then started to stain using Minwax Dark Walnut Stain. 
I worked per board about 12 inches at a time. Once I got finished, I let that rest for about an hour. After that, I wiped off the excess and let it sit overnight. Just a warning, this is a pretty messy job. On the next evening, and the next evening I applied some polyurethane and a satin finish by Verithane to keep it looking good longer. All right, guys, let's get it on up there and see what we got. Hopefully not break it. Uh, let's go ahead and move this piece. Let's go ahead and just pick this whole thing up. Let's uh, gently place it down on there. And there we go. Guys, somehow I managed to delete the recording to me attaching the top of it. But basically what I did is I used two and a half inch screws to come from underneath the IKEA unit, underneath the uh, inside of the cube, and screw up into the bottom wood. And that way it firmly attaches the, uh, the work surface to the cubes. And that's how I did it. It keeps it from moving around, makes it a little easier to maneuver because you can just grab the work surface. And, nothing's, and it's all going to move together. It's all super smooth. All right, guys, let's go ahead and take just take a look at around. You see the beautiful wood surface. Overall, it turned out pretty good. It has some edge imperfections, but overall, it's not too bad. I mean, the edges aren't exactly perfect, uh, but overall, I'm very happy, especially with these little IKEA drawer units, especially with the, with the uh, drawers and everything. They turned out looking super nice. You can roll it with one hand, even on carpet. Like, not a problem. Overall, super happy with this. And as always, if you, if, you, if you found this video helpful, feel free to give it a big old thumbs up. Guys, I appreciate all the love and support, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.